Are you a tradesperson who's struggling to generate enough leads for your business and you'd like more projects in, you can handle more quotes, then watch this video. My name is Michael Greenwood. I help businesses with the marketing lead generation. And tip number one is you need a professional website. Uh, just have a look at your website and if it needs updating, if it's five years old, plus or even a couple of years these days uh, because things move so fast it could be that um, you know you, you need a new website I mean ask yourself a question how do you know how many leads are coming in through your website for a start uh, how much you're paying for your website how's your SEO are you appearing on Google go go on to Google and search in um, local locksmiths or locksmith near me or glazing uh, companies do you come up on the first page if not you need SEO right so professional website wants to be modern design easy to navigate information on there, answering questions that your prospects are going to ask um, have you got a downloadable brochure uh, if, if you're that kind of um, trade company have you got clear calls to action so people know next steps that they're going to like re request a quote uh, contact us or anything like that um, onto your search engine optimization this is quite a complex field and you know there's, there's uh, it, it's a bit of a minefield really but essentially if you're not coming up on Google and your competitors are then you're missing out on business you're missing out on inquiries so you need to increase your market share on Google and you may need some help with that. So uh, next is your Google business profile or you Google my business. Um, and uh, that's what it used to be called. It be called various, various things in the past. Um, this is the little profile that we've got coming up on Google. You can have photos of projects on there, videos, keep it updated, keep the, uh, keep, keep the stuff coming on there. Uh, show people pictures of you, your team, um, group photos, to show that you're a real business um, and that you know you, you, you're showing your people your team on there your projects your before and afters and it just it'll stand out from competitors who aren't doing that who've just got no photos on or got one photo on from two years ago if I see a Google business profile uh, and it's got photos on and old reviews from like two years ago I'm wondering if they're still in business so it's going to slightly lower me chances of contacting them and I'd rather see that they're up to date and they've got good reviews and they've got recent reviews and, and all that kind of thing it's it, 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 if, if they've got 20 reviews and they're from all from two years ago or up to two years ago that's better than if they've got no reviews but if they've got 30 reviews and they're all recent and beyond two years ago that's even better so it's all based on the strength of your competition um so that's number three go, get a google business profile get it optimized get some special offers on there as well get some google posts on share your updates and promotions um next is your online directories and citations which basically means you're going to sign up to business directories get your opening hours in there if you've got them uh, get your phone number on there, get a link to your website, Get again get some photos on there, get some videos on there. Um, you can really go to town on this kind of thing. Um, but yeah, appearing in online directories because basically if you're appearing in online directories you don't only get a link back to your site, your website, but also um, there's something called um, consistency and app and also citations. So it's all these impressions that you get. Uh, from Google's point of view, showing that you're a real business, showing that you've got the same phone number across, um, and you've got a you know real location and stuff like that. So uh, name, address, postcode is called NAP. That's where you know you've got consistency, and that's something that Google likes essentially. And you'll get higher rankings um, with all things being considered equal, and out outrank competitors who haven't done those things. So it's again, it's all based on strength, strength of the competition. Um, so your online directories you have your descriptions of your service you can list your services you have customer reviews on those as well um, and sometimes customers will naturally find the, these profiles as well and um, if they're well optimized with a, your logo 
maybe even a job that you did for them, like a before and after, then they'll leave, they might leave a review on there, um, like proactively without even uh, asking them. But I would say with your reviews, um, to which will come up to that's point nine, um, that you want to be proactively asking for reviews and have a system so it's more automated as well, uh, the, the actual asking for the reviews. Uh, so number five is having a strong social media presence. This is your uh, Facebook, your Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. If, you, if you're uh, doing B2B as well, so business to business, uh, having LinkedIn is, is a good idea as well. Uh, so showing your proje projects on there, having some video testimonials is, is really good. But, but yeah, you want your before and after photos, projects, customer testimonials, uh, any tips around the trade. Uh, you can even put some, if you do home improvements, DIY tips as well and stuff like that. So, so educating your uh, prospective buyers how to actually buy from you, uh, but also um, education on how to maintain um, what, what you've installed from as well. So cleaning um, and, and things like that, how to keep things nice and nice and sparkly. Um, so your social media presence, very, very important. Um, so next, uh, we mentioned search engine optimization, uh, but also local SEO as well um, is important. So this is more like um, for your, um, your your localized search really. So there's, there's kind of like the main SEO can be seen as like national SEO, but also like your local SEO as, as well. So both, both quite important. Just uh, consider um, where your target audience is. So when you're coming up with your ICP, so your ideal customer profile, ideal client profile, um, then you're starting to look at you know the locations that they live in. You could, I think one of the misconceptions is uh, you, you, you could serve a 50 mile radius, but you might actually uh, just want the affluent areas there where they've got the money to actually pay for the, um, you know, the, the nice new conservatory and stuff like that. Um, so, so yeah, you, you might be more selective within areas as well. So that's where your, your local SEO can, uh, can can come in as well. Uh, with your uh, next up is your networking, uh, making sure that you actually um, maybe maybe uh, I think networking for a trace person can be your collaborations with other other trace people as well, where you can pass work um, back and forth. You can get these through your trade associations, some business groups, and things like that. Um, so yeah, that can be quite important, especially when you're working on bigger projects and you're wanting to put like a referral network, um, you know, because they say um, your, net, your, net, uh, your net worth is your network. So uh, next up is uh, referral programs where you can say, look, um, refer a friend. Are you happy with your new locks or whatever? If you're locksmith, are you happy with your conservatory or your new windows or your composite doors um, or your solar panels? Who else? Are you happy with the work yet? Yeah, leave me a customer review. Um, let's do a, a video review, a testimonial. Also, who can you think of who can uh, would also benefit from this uh, from these as well? Who do you know doesn't have solar panels, for example, and would like to save energy? So you're selling the benefit rather than the panels. People don't want the solar panels; they want to save the energy. Yeah. So uh, that's that's the thing. You sell the you sell the sizzle, not the steak. Uh, next up is uh, customer reviews. Then, so we've touched on this a few times. This is this is quite important, uh, kind of integral. Testimonials, really, really important. After each job, a system to ask them for a review. What I would suggest is try to get a video testimonial, whether that's later on on a Zoom call, whether that's there and then. Um, if you can even go to the investment of it. A videographer who's who's catching um, you just after the job's complete and the and the, and the clients um, maybe at the most elevated where everything's uh, absolutely brand new and everything that would be fantastic. Uh, so I mean, so so that's something you can consider. I think the minimum standard uh, for me would be to have an automatic system to um, to ask the customer for a testimonial. On maybe Google and perhaps Facebook as well, and maybe Trustpilot, and maybe maybe a few other places, um, and and also to get video testimonials as well. It'd be, I think it'd be nice to have, but I think it's becoming more 
um, prominent. I think it's I, I think it's the future. Uh, actually, getting uh, clients on on video. Not everybody's going to want to be on video, but it don't hurt. Uh, you're asking if you don't you don't uh, ask you don't get. Uh, so next up, that's your customer reviews. That's number nine. Uh, we've got um, 10 next, which is content marketing. Right, this is video content. This is uh, articles on your website. This is social media um, and all that kind of thing. So you want auto guides, downloadable maintenance checklist, PDFs, brochures. Um, so electronic brochures in PDF format. You can either have the flip book type electronic things. Some people like them, some people don't. Um, I think I think PDFs are pretty cool um, and uh, informative FAQ videos so we're thinking funnels right top of funnel helping people to understand uh, how to solve the problem yeah and then further on down the funnel video testimonials so why should they use you so they, they know how to solve the problem now they're now picking a company and they want the social proof and evidence that you can do the job and this is where the video testimonials come in. So videos at every part of the funnel, right? And then you can have some uh, so, some videos all over the website are gonna gonna work really well, where you're providing value to the audience, you're helping them through the sales process, you're just helping them to do business with you rather than a competitor. You want a one-stop shop. What I always say is, if uh, if you help somebody choose the paint, uh, you you you. Um, you can even tell them how you're going to do the painting, but at the end of the day, how you do it's how you do it, it's what you do, it's the expertise, and that's what they're paying for, really. They're just paying for the consulting, the strategy around it, and then the implementation, yeah? They're not going to tell you how to paint. You're going to tell them how you're going to paint because you're the expert, but they're going to tell you what they want, and you can help them choose the paint as well. So if you can do that on the website, that'd be amazing, because then um, you know you, you, you've helped to nurture them. People buy from people, and there's that know, like, and trust um, as well. So if you can get them top of the funnel, solve the problem, and then uh, narrow it down to the customers who can afford your services, and then you, you, you can um, you can really help and add value. So next up is email marketing. This is split into two things. Uh, email marketing is where you, 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 kind of your Mailchimp or whatever, where you can segment uh, your email list into, you know, different groups and and all that kind of thing. Especially if you're like an home improvement company, where you do a, a bunch of different things. Maybe you can help. M maybe the priority is doing the kitchen, but then they want the bathroom doing. Maybe they want an extension uh, because grandparents are moving in and they, they want to, them to have a bit more space or anything like that. Um, so they want to have more like an extended family uh, kind of living arrangement. So um, you can really uh, start to segment your audience. So it could be you could have a form on your website as an home improvement company, and then that uh, that inquiry comes in. Right, what would you like? We would like an extension. And then when it comes to the sale, ah, um, what are you thinking about having done in future? We are they are sell, um, but it's just ask. It's solving the problem. Um, at that stage and that's how you can increase your lifetime value uh, the other aspect of it is uh, so that's your your consent based email marketing but you've got your cold email outreach as well so this is only really applicable uh, if you're going after businesses so let's say you're a commercial cleaner uh, and you like to contact businesses to clean office space um, then you can actually get a, a list of um, office space decision makers for the UK or whatever area and then send some cold email outreach but that shouldn't be done with MailChimp uh, you will get banned on that uh, so you want to use something else like maybe um, maybe Lemlist for that um, and, and that's all minefield and I can put a video together on that at some point or, or maybe a course if there's demand for that um, so number 12 uh, flyers and business cards very 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 uh, powerful uh, it's something that somebody can hold in their hand, but it, it takes time to distribute. Um, and you either do it yourself or you pay somebody who you trust. Um, if you're going to do that, I'd say get them to take photos or everything and almost like document it. Maybe even track them, you know, like you would on, on like an Ico or a walk. And, and obviously you let them know that you're going to do that and that's part of the process. 
and then you know where they are and you know that they're not kind of just going and dumping your leaflets so you i would say if you're going to get somebody to do to, to do your leaflets for you or your, or your flies or your postcards um, you do want to be um, some kind of tracking thing going on and some kind of regular take a picture take a picture this is what we're doing and all that kind of thing but obviously watch your GDPR and make sure you stay within the rules on that uh, if you're in the UK um, so next up we've got the vehicle branding uh, very very important obviously you're driving around it creates a brand impression um, people might even call you uh, you know, if they see your number on your van, see what you do. You want your logo, your name, your services, contact information. Wants to be clear and professional. Um, next up is your uh, local print uh, advertising. Um, so you can go into like your little leaflets get that get dropped through doors and things like that. Um, I usually say keep that up for at least six months, like with any kind of ads. Um, and um, you know, because you, you, you're creating, you're doing, you're doing a number of uh, repetitions and, and impressions really um, to, to, to get that, uh, build that brand recognition. Um, so yeah, um, you, you cannot, a lot of these uh, publications have the demographics of where you can select as well. So you can select the affluent areas and stuff like that, um, if that's what you're looking for. Um, so number 15, um, we've got special offers and discounts. Uh, it's nice to have special offers uh, because that creates some scarcity uh, and like repackage what you're doing. So there's different ways of doing this where you can, you can promote these special offers as well through your website, social media, um, your email newsletters, your local advertising that we mentioned in, in 14 and your flyers that we mentioned in, uh, in, uh, yeah, in, 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 in 12. But, uh, yeah, so th these are things that have got a, a clear start and end date as well. So it could be 10% off for the month of June, um, get, get front door and back door and get 100 quid off, up to 50% off prices for July, that kind of thing we're talking about. But what you want to try to avoid is having the same offer all the time and forget to take it off your website, because that can come across as disingenuine, uh, really. So uh, next up is uh, community involvement, so you can sponsor um, like a football team or local um, group or something like that um, and uh, you can also um, you know you, you can uh, have, a, have a have a booth at a, 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 a event or something like that a community event and um, demonstrate what you do and, and how your products and services can save energy or you know because you know like windows can save energy solar panels uh, that's the purpose and all that kind of thing and help save people money uh, and you can offer some free consultations as a call to action as well so you can come around and, and uh, do a survey or quote um, go, go around to the home and do a survey and quote um, and then next up is workshops and seminars this can be quite powerful um, where you're giving like actual practical tips um, really so you, you might be talking about um, how to make your home more secure. So like a like a locksmith or security specialist, for example, could say, right, what, what are these 10 ways that you can, um, you know, decrease the chance of, of somebody uh, breaking into your home. So it's like things like trimming your edges so they're not as, so there's nowhere to really hide behind, making sure you've got burglar alarms, uh, talking about the locking systems. And the thing is you can do that locally uh, and you can also, record yourself doing it locally and then put that online as well and then have a bit of a q and a session as well so the, a lot of these things go up hand in hand and um it, there's so much you can do in terms of marketing and, and so much you can really you know push forward on, on so many fronts um and then you've got uh, your partnerships so you know cross promotion with with, with other uh, complementary businesses so if you're a locksmith you might know some plumbers if plumber notices there's some problem or keeps the uh, ears to the ground on, or they've just been out doing this plumbing, customer says the the uh, electrics have got some problems or whatever, then it's good to know these other people, especially working on bigger projects as well, where it, it takes a team of you with different disciplines and different expertise. Uh, next is your professional certifications. Have them on your website, shout them out on your social media. It's a no-brainer. Uh, have your insurances in place as well. I mean, this is all, uh, it's kind of, 
you, you've got insurances have it have some um some uh, some uh, something about them on your, on your website and social media we're fully insured uh, it, it's it's all you know the basics of this but uh, just letting you know that getting this on your website and your social media is is a good idea as well just so you're showing that you're that you're legit um, get your professional certifications on like all your marketing materials so your, your uh, business cards as well uh, any, any flyers you've got and it helps to build trust with your potential customers uh, and then next is online advertising um, so there's three um, uh, three main ways to, to, to kind of market it's either going to be outbound which uh, if you're B2B it could be cold calling it could be some of the things we touched on here so your, like your cold email outreach and all that you've got um, organic which is talked about social media uh, talked about SEO and things like that and then you've got paid advertising um, so that's like online advertising you can geo-target it you can target specific demographics psychographics things like that things that people are interested in that means um, and demographics like age groups and, and all that kind of thing so you could sell up um, you could target like 50 plus and they um, chance are owning their own home therefore got money to invest in home improvements for example like in, on Facebook ads and then you can track that performance in your ads optimize um, your campaigns and, and improve your return on investment your ROI so implementing these strategies uh, I'm not saying you need to do all of them I would be selective but this should give you 20 good strategies that a lot of them go hand in hand uh, if, if you did them all you'd be absolutely flying but don't kind of try to charge forward on multiple fronts at the same time and then end up not making progress on any of them I would pick a few uh, that resonate with you uh, and look for some gaps in the market as well. I mean, if you need any help with any of this, um, link in the description. Do get in touch. My name is Michael Greenwood. Um, happy to have a discovery call with you. Um, but implementing these strategies uh, will help um, to 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 increase visibility. Um, to um, I implementing these well enough um, over time will get you inquiries. These are tried and trusted uh, methods and it helps you to, to build a strong reputation. It's things that you might not think about, um, things that you might not realize that you can do even, or things that you might be aware of but you haven't got around to yet. But if you do need some implementation and strategy um, help, then let me know, uh, link in the description. And uh, please like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.